Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Fixer Med, and today I'm going to be showing you the best way to utilize the USMLE RX Bricks resource alongside the Onking Step 1 and 2 deck. Now, I know a lot of people either love or hate Onki, and there's really no in between. And from what I've seen as a student, is that a lot of people tend to hate Anki because they've never been taught how to use Anki properly. And now what I mean by that is Anki is a beast by itself to just learn since it has so much customization available to the user and the UI and everything is just bland out of the box. But I hope in this tutorial series, I'm able to teach future students how to use the on king deck properly in order to master the medical sciences whether that is for in-house quizzes in-house exams nbme cast examinations cas stands for custom assessment service or something like that and i think the nbme cbse exam which is a beast many second year students had to take in order to be eligible for STEP at some institutions. And also, of course, the Step 1 exam. You know, ideally, you want to learn as much as you can during this time to build a strong foundation to build up to the Step 2 exam, which is what determines a lot of people's future careers. So I hope that all my viewers are able to get a strong understanding of Anki through this video series. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So, for this tutorial, you're gonna need Onking Step 1 and 2 deck, which you can get from Anki Hub, or a classmate that has Anki Hub willing to share with a flash drive. And you're gonna need an active subscription to the USMLE RX Bricks resource. I think if you get the bundle of Step 1 resources and whatnot, it should all be in there alongside the QBank, First Aid, etc. So, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the RxBricks webpage. So when you're on the RxBricks webpage, you go to Rx Essentials and then go to either the discipline you want to study or the organ system you want to study. Now I'm just going to go through the discipline here and I'm going to hit cell and molecular biology. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do cell membranes as my example article here. So I'm on the cell membranes Rx article. So when I'm going through this article, you, I'm going to want to take notes as I'm reading through the article just to ensure that I have a locus of memory while reading through this thing or some way of just retaining the information because it can get really boring when reading these articles. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Some of these subjects are very dry and you just need to learn, understand, and memorize as much as you can when going through these articles because it is 17 minutes long and you just need something to go through and learn this material because it's very high yield. Most of the material on these articles are high yield alongside in the Anki deck. So I'm a good med student. I'm going through reading this, um, understanding the arrows. Those are frequently tested questions on like step one MBME exams, even in-house exams in some situations. So always pay attention to these arrows because they never go away and I'm going through it going through it finally reached the end of the article read the summary so I have a good understanding of like what was presented throughout the article complete the review questions so I can actually ensure that I got something out of reading the article ideally you want to try and get as many of these right as you can okay I did that and then hit off the review learning objective list to make sure you're done with this article. So here's where the fun starts. There are these first aid articles. Th these are extremely useful for Anki retention. Now what do I mean by Anki retention? I mean Anki is great for in the learning process, but it's not the only tool you need in the learning process. Ideally you want to do a first pass through of the material and then use Anki to review, review, review. Okay? Review, review, review. That's the mantra of Anki. Rx is your initial learning source. And then I had to study flash flags, flashcards, which I really don't like, but some people might like. Express videos. Hey, 
speed it up. Basically presents the article in video form if you want to do that instead. Be my guest. And then the most important thing is the practice QMAX questions. You can go ahead and do these after the article to make sure you can apply the information you learned. Or you could save them for the end right before a unit exam or a module exam. Either way, it should work out fine if you just stick to one method of learning and retaining information. So back to the first aid facts. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read through this as well since I'm a good med student. And I want to make sure I solidly understand the concepts that are being presented to me. So I read through the article, take notes on anything that I'm missing in my RX article notes. Take notes, memorize, etc., etc. I have all this down. Sweet. Now, you might be thinking, why did you make me pay specific attention to the first aid facts list? That is because Anki is tagged by various different resources. All right, I should say the Anking deck is tagged by various different resources. Now, I'm going to go back here. Sorry about this. Spoiler alert. And I am going to go to the tags. So in the tag section, I see various tag subheadings. AK step one, AK step two, AK step three. Now I'm in the step one portion of my journey as a medical student or as a dental student taking the CBSE. You know, I'm gonna go here. And as I can see, there's AMBOSS question ID resources listed. So I buy the question discipline. I believe they present the content here. Then I have boards and beyond separated by the videos, etc. Bootcamp, Combank, Costanzo, the physiology textbook, uh, first aid, NBME by exam number, oh, online medical education, osmosis, pathoma, physio, Pixar sketchy, RX, which is actually not the RX Berkshire resources. It is the RX question. So it's separated by the RX question ID. UWorld, same way, question ID, test number, etc. And then the update systems, etc. So you don't need to focus on all that. Right now, you need to hit first aid, go to the discipline we're under, which is biochemistry. So make sure you collapse that. Then go to cellular, because we were under the cellular section. And then if you recall, our three articles that we just highlighted were cell trafficking, cytoskeletal elements, and cilia structure, right? So we need to unsuspend these cards. Now, if you use the on King guide, he tells the students to suspend the cards and unsuspend them as they're learning the material. I will probably make that more evident in another video for like a complete bigger there on Anki, but I'm assuming the majority of people watching this video have used Anki in some shape, some way, shape or form in the past. So, yes, I'm going to go ahead and go to cell trafficking now. I'm going to select all. So I'm going to hit edit, select all. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to unsuspend these cards. I'm going to right click again, flag the cards. And then I'm going to go to the next article we covered. Just cytoskeletal element, same system, edit, select all, right click. Toggle suspend, it's unsuspended now. Flag, flag it. Silly structure, same thing. Edit, select all. Toggle suspend, flag. Sweet, I got all the cards I need for that brick now. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out for now. And I'm gonna go to tools, create filter deck. And I'm going to go to cellular membranes, RX article cards. Now this is just the template I like utilizing when reviewing so I don't get mixed up with any other filter decks I have. And then this makes it very easy. I don't have to make any complicated on key tag for my search. I can hit flag one and then it should get me all the cards I just flagged. 
I like change that to 9,999 because let's face it, you're not going to do that many cards. You just want the maximum cards you just flag down. So I'm going to go ahead and build that now. Bang. Built. And I'm going to go here. And I'm going to start studying. And then I have this information here. SRPs. Good. Cartagener due to a motile cilia due to a dining arm defect. Good. Vesicular trafficking protein. COP1. SO disease. High plasma levels of lysosoma enzymes, etc. It's Cartagener syndrome. I got that pretty easily, so I'm going to hit easy. Of course, facial structures. Eye cell disease. Easy. Decreased membrane fluidity, trans configuration, you know, easy, easy. So eventually I'm just going to finish this deck, right? So when I'm done, it's going to just give me a congratulations page. And then instead of this, it's just going to be like, congratulations, you finished this deck. So ignore all this text for now. When you're done with your deck, and if you want to do another repetition of the same cards, you rebuild, and then you press study now again. And then you go through it again. So high plasma levels of lysosomal enzymes. Easy. Vesicular protein. Vesicular trafficking protein for retrograde Golgi transport. Cop 1. Abundant cytosolic ribonucleic proteins of traffic proteins from ribosome to the RER. SRPs. So it's pretty easy and straightforward. Um, once I'm done... I like going through the cards and I hit browse and then I like to unflag them because at this point there is no reason for me to not have it set in the Anki algorithm. Oh, you don't have to suspend them. I'm just doing that because I plan on suspending these cards again since I reset my deck for the purpose of this tutorial series and yeah. I have finished with those cards, so I'm going to send them back to the overall Anki deck. I'm going to close up. Oop. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me open up Anki again to show you guys how to set your cards back. Technology can be either wonderful or a pain in the butt. I don't want to update right now, but you guys should frequently update your Anki software. It does help, believe it or not. So now that I'm done with these cards, I can go ahead, click the gear icon, hit delete. And now they're back in my main overall Anki deck, which is how I like to study. I like the spaced repetition aspect of Anki, but if I need to cram some cards in after reading an article, that helps a lot. And learning the material I need to learn that day. Now this procedure usually takes me like three, four hours per article. As an estimate, you can get it down to potentially one to two hours if you get really fast at taking notes, doing the questions, reading the first aid article, etc. But most med school classes I think cover about two to three breaks worth of information a day. So it's a good way to keep retaining the information. Um, good way to keep root viewing the information on a daily basis if you don't have it down and it's just a nice crutch to have when you're taking exams and you forget something but then you're like oh i saw that on anki 72 times let me go and hit b and then you get the answer right and you feel wonderful now i guess that does it all for this video today um if you guys have any questions concerns or any other comments be sure to leave them in the comment section below if you have any video suggestions, I'd also appreciate you guys giving me those suggestions in the comment section below. And if you have any constructive criticism, also put it in the comment section below. Now, guys, it's been a privilege teaching you guys how to use Rx Bricks with the On King Step 1 and 2 deck. This is Fixer Med signing off. Make sure you have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.